cool then, yeah. Okay. Right, okay, so a warm welcome to everybody joining us on this Influencer Marketing Roundtable today. And we're gonna talk about um, Instagram more specifically. So before we do that, a um, little bit about uh, who I am. Um, I call it my sort of shameless plug. So I host um, and influence a podcast. Now we've done about 55 episodes, so, so do subscribe to that. Um, I'm also the author of Influencer Marketing Strategy, which was published here in March. You can get that from Amazon and other leading bookstores. Uh, about 300 pages, 86,000 words. I remember writing every word. <laughs> um, uh, but what it also is, is a lot of interviews with thought leaders, influencers, agencies, and brands. A really good, helpful guide to understanding influencer marketing. I also speak at events and um, host panels, uh, and I'm a contributor to uh, events as well. You can also work with me on a one to one basis. And that one to one basis is what I call my influencer marketing program. So our, uh, my aim there is to actually help thought leaders, individuals really define their online influence because ultimately what we want to do is generate more revenue, and charge higher prices. We want to encourage more customers to come to you. And of course, we want your content to be consumed by a wider audience. And I do that through a five stage process which is understanding where you are on the spectrum of your competitors or exemplars. And then we look at um, aligning your social media profile as is and what needs to change in order to step forward and grow your audience. And then we develop a personal influencer marketing strategy just for you. Um, the most important thing is you can't do this on your own. Uh, and it's uh, making sure that we've got partnerships that are aligned with your goals as well. Um, I've got a fairly extensive community, so the people I work with, I like to try and help and connect. And that's what influence is all about at the end of the day. It's about sharing sharing contact, uh, connections and people that have similar values to you. And then lastly, it's all about evaluating what's working, what isn't, and then optimizing it for future growth. So that's a little bit about my influencer marketing program. If you want to find out more, then you uh, can just hit me up on Instagram or Facebook messenger and i can tell you more uh, and then uh, lastly something i'm really excited about is i'm putting my first major event together which is on the 8th of september we've got a fantastic lineup of uh, amazing speakers thought leaders uh, in the b2b space that's a really important growth area at the moment so that's online on the 8th of september tickets are just 39 pounds so it's not very expensive uh, and you can uh, register on the Hopin website. Okay, so today we're really talking about Instagram and growing your account. So I'm going to just talk, I'm just going to give you loads and loads of little snippets and things before we talk about growth. I think it's important to understand about the, your feed and what that looks like. Um, so I don't know whether many of you have got, have thought about presets. And presets, if you've not heard of this before, is effectively having a grid and a format that you can work with. And if you're, a, um, if you're trying to appeal to a brand in terms of collaboration, um, people will scroll through your feed and make an assessment of what you are, who you are, what you're about, and whether or not they can work with you based upon what they see before they've even made contact, almost like your ideal CV. Um, and the reason why presets are really important is because it creates a really nice aesthetic. Uh, it makes that your photographs, your, your inspirational quotes or whatever you want to do um, consistently appealing, perhaps with a similar filter, overtone look. Um, and we've got some people in the Influencer Marketing Secrets group that have got amazing grids, um, Louise Simpson being one of them. Um, so a few little hacks to think about, uh, first and foremost, um, we want to be able to be responsive when we've got people commenting. So some of the things that you can set up in your Instagram is auto quick replies. This saves you constantly typing out. Now, I don't tend to have huge amounts of comments on my Instagram, but 
some of you that may well be that you've got a lot there and it would just make it a lot easier if you've set those up so you can do that um, quite easily in the um, uh, in your account settings um, it's a good idea to archive old photos um, because it's amazing people do when they're scrolling through your feed they will make an assessment as I've said earlier and if you've got things that perhaps don't you know aren't necessarily relevant today or you know for example I used to have a beard I don't have one now so you know I'm taking out some of the pictures of me with a beard <laughs> um, make sure that you've always got line breaks in your posts as well so that you can separate them from the main message to some of the hashtags I want to talk about hashtags in a minute actually um, you can use scheduling tools. There's a lot that's out there. Hootsuite's pretty good. Um, and of course, some of them are free, but what they tend to be is only, they only give you perhaps two accounts that you can use. The idea being is, is that we probably want more. So to trade up to premium, there's obviously a charge related to it, but uh, it's certainly worth it. I wouldn't rely entirely on scheduling tools though. Um, what 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 is a good idea is to have a scheduler for maybe two or three posts a week. Um, but actually, what you also need to be is responsive for what's coming and going on on the platform, uh, particularly with your target customers, um, uh, and and something that might pop up generally in the news that you want to relate to. Make sure your photos are sized correctly for Instagram. And um, sometimes I've seen this, and I've made the mistakes myself, is that you, you get a, a nice post, you know, a nice image, and then you pop it up in your feed, and then it's cropped incorrectly. All that does is just doesn't make you look very professional. Um, and if you're trying to appeal to organisations, brands in which to work with, getting that right is important. Um, uh, you can actually look at deciding whether or not you want to allow people to comment. You also want to make sure that you remove the offensive comments filter in your settings, uh, because otherwise people could be um, say some unpleasant things. And uh, you don't want that because other people are going to see that. So you just need to make sure that is on. Um, and also you have a look at IG fonts as well. Um, this is a really good way to make sure that you are consistent in what you are using and um, make sure you're using the right fonts all the time. Um, I'm sure many of you that are watching this have already got um, the business account as well. Um, and um, if you haven't, then you can switch over to this. And the benefit of this, it means that you can promote using ads and also, but more importantly, you can get some really amazing insights on what your account is doing, your follower growth, and all that sort of stuff. So do, do check that out. Right, now there are different types of hashtags. Um, you can have a product or brand hashtag, for example, Mars Bar. You can have a niche hashtag, for example, something like travel blogger. You can have a special event one, maybe Christmas Day or Mother's Day or something like this. Definitely always create a location hashtag. So if you are in, um, because it's amazing how many people will search for things based upon our location as well. Um, what's popular as well is to have a daily hashtag. Uh, Monday blues, you know, Wednesday witterings or whatever. <laughs> There's a number of different things that you can do there, but uh, these are good. Um, you can have relevant phrases that people are using quite a lot. He Who Wanders is a good community tag as well. Um, another one that's are quite popular, these acronyms, for example, TBT like Throwback Thursday, and there are a number of others. These are popular. And of course, emoji hashtags as well. So don't, you know, do think about putting those. What's really important though, is you have a strategy in relation to your Instagram growth. Um, one thing I don't know if you're all aware of, by the way, is are you aware that um, if you go into your settings 
um, <clears throat> on your phone and you go down to manage contact contacts, you've got all of the phone numbers of all your Instagram um, uh, contact contacts or email addresses. Wow. So this is something else. I don't know if you're aware of that. Were you aware of that? I don't know. <laughs> no. um, so yeah, so that's really, really helpful, isn't it? Um, right, a few things to recruit your um, <clears throat> your um, ideal follower base is to look at your competitors. So what I'd like you to have a look at is your top 10 competitors or exempt. Have a look at what they're doing and then ideally try and scroll down the, the people that are following them. If they've got quite substantial follower bases, follow them on the hope that they'll follow you back they may not do that straight away but ideally it's a good start point for you and what you could do is start to engage with them um in their feed it's what i call this sort of punch punch um no jab jab punch sorry i've got jab jab punch which effectively is comment comment and then reach out to them uh, on a direct message um, you can also search target keywords. For example, I'm working on a rum brand at the moment. So one of the things in order to, for me to find other influencers, uh, I typed in hashtag rum. And uh, then I went and had a look at some of the different feed, feeds that were on there uh, and then found that there were some really interesting like cocktail connoisseurs uh, so I found them because clearly they had used hashtag rum as one of their hashtags. Otherwise, I wouldn't have known about the cocktail connoisseur. Um, so, yeah, there's a few things there. Um, what is important, though, is to not use the same hashtags on every post. Um, Instagram's got some community guidelines around this. And it actually may well penalise you for doing so by the algorithm. So just be aware of this. Um, something else I think is really important for you to have is a 30 day content planner. So um, uh, what before you even decide what to put out, what I think is important is to see what else other people are doing. So research the best content ideas. I have just shared with you on this slide a whole bunch of different ideas from polls to asking a question uh, to running a giveaway, hosting a sale, all sorts of different things. But what it's about doing is having a plan and trying not to be so uh, spontaneous. And I'm not saying that spontaneous doesn't have its place, but I think it's important to really set out a proper plan. And then stick to it um the other thing of course you can have a look at is when you uh, assu assuming you're on the business the, the business page um you'll be able to go into settings and see some your insights what's really interesting here is i don't know if it's coming up on here on the on the presentation okay but if you look at impressions it will actually show you where if if they've come from hashtags so what that allows you to do is to really understand uh, how successful or not uh, that is uh, that is working. In terms of numbers of hashtags, you can have, have actually up to 30, but the common consensus is about 11. Um, another thing to do is to go live, live on Instagram. Um, the algorithm responds any really well to video content. They're yeah, probably trying to compete with TikTok as well, so they're very mindful of that. Um, I think from I've done a few lives, um, but more often than not, I've also been a guest on an interview. So that's been really good. If you wanted to interview like your target customer. Uh, and then that way it might well be that, you know, not only can you promote that and they encourage their people, but you can as well. So you get a double whammy in terms of opportunities. Lives tend to be authentic um, and allow audiences to sort of come and go as they choose. 
What can be really good as well is having a regular time slot. Uh, so it's, you know, every Wednesday at 7 p.m., you know, and then promote it before. Hey, guys, I'm going to be back online on Wednesday. At, don't forget to, to be here for the live on Wednesday at 7 o'clock. Be there or be square, you know, something like that. Um, uh, I'd love to know what, um, whether Lydia, I know that you, I don't know if you've done sort of uh, Instagram lives and what the average time that you've run them for, if you have. We can talk about that uh, afterwards. Right. Um, uh, in Instagram Reels and IGTV, of course, have been hugely popular um, and definitely it's something that um, the, the growth is definitely here. In fact, we were on one of the other round tables. One of the guests was saying to me that they've had something like 10,000 increase in followers in the last three months, and that's all been attributed to... Um, to them doing reels so clearly you know, it can make a big difference i tell you what people love they like the authenticity of it they like the behind the scenes they like new product ideas tutorials um what's really important is that you create a real story behind this you know um and um you know do some really so going back to my point about research checking out what other people are doing what's working what do you like and why do you like it? Um, the big, uh, other big growth, of course, is in live stream shopping. And we've seen that within um, America, it's not America, China rather, um, where it's just absolutely exploded at the moment, where influencers are selling millions of pounds worth of products through live stream. So um, I think it's about just bringing the products to life, but also put, putting shoppable links on there so people can see it, feel it, experience it, and then, you know, go straight to purchase. Um, right now, in terms of promoting your Instagram, you need to do that everywhere. So my suggestion is putting it on your website or on any landing pages, uh, on email footers, on branded merchandise, Plant and van stickers is another really good idea. Um, if you're going to run competitions or contests, perhaps link it to uh, uh, people have to follow you on Instagram to participate. Um, I don't know if any of you know about Linktree. Well, Linktree is effectively is, is a one portal. And you can see an example of mine on the right hand side is one portal where you can put all of your uh, different social media channels, uh, website and other contact details on. That's really helpful. Um, making sure that you're always promoting your Instagram on other social channels, including Clubhouse uh, and others. Uh, on videos as well at the end, so if you're creating a video, make sure that you say, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, but also follow us on Instagram. Work really well. Um, uh, also think about creating your own branded hashtag. And this is important because it makes it unique to you. And that means you can understand and find out who is following you. Um, and some big brands do this. So for example, um, Lululemon, uh, which, is, which is a um, club workout brand, um, has used this hashtag, uh, the sweaty life. And of course it's meant that they've been able to really assess uh, you know their target audience and find out potentially more clients as a result of that um what else um oops sorry um right on instagram i just thought i'd give you a sense of some of the top hashtag instagram hashtags in july 2021 20, so people that use the word love was 1.83 billion <laughs> Instagood 1.15. So you can see straight away some big names there. Now, the only there are benefits of using these, but there are also drawbacks because you can sometimes get lost in the noise. So there's an argument to say this can create reach, but it's it's like in a busy motorway. Whereas sometimes if you've got a niche or a branded hashtag, less people searching for it, but the chances of you standing out are greater. Whatever you do, don't buy followers. You know, I was just researching this even this morning and I just cannot believe 
how many websites there are promoting the sale of buying followers. Now, so you can get 500 followers for just six pounds on this particular site I found. But I tell you what, it will damage your engagement hugely because what you want is people that are going to follow you that have an interest in your brand product or, or yourself. Um, followers that are inauthentic and don't resonate with you will affect your your engagement rate. And that is what brands are looking for more and more. Um, they would argue now um, that they'd have a smaller audience, even a thousand or five thousand followers. But if they're totally on point and they're all aligned with what they want, then the, the likely engagement rate and the connection to your website is going to be significantly higher. There you go. Hopefully that was useful. Um, you can create your own name tag, actually. And I don't know if you, I don't know if this works. Uh, George, do you want to try and see if you can um, use your phone or Lydia for your, to, to connect with me on, on this? But this is effectively um, something that you can promote on your various networks. I don't know if you can <laughs> go up to the screen. I, I'm on my phone. I'm on my phone. Are oh, you on your phone? <laughs> yeah, I don't know, if, Lydia. I don't know if you're connected to Instagram. Are you able to just put your phone are you, I, are you on your phone? I am on Instagram, but I know nothing. That's why I'm here. I just want to learn. I'm I'm very new to Instagram. Uh, okay. I know nothing okay. at all. Uh, okay, right, fine, right. That's it, right. I'm just going to stop then. So we're back in the room, and Anna's joined us as well. So nice to see you, Anna. Thank you. Oh, well, I say that, I can't see you. I can just see, um, are you able to join us in the physical presence or? <laughs> um, I'm here, Gordon. Uh, I'm just sitting on a laptop with no webcam, I'm afraid, on a, oh. on a, on a, a desktop with no webcam. Oh, um, and I, I'm also impaired because I've um, very severely damaged a muscle. So I'm in oh. pain. So what oh, I can do is a bit... <laughs> I'm, I'm, yeah, and and finally, my um, internet keeps cutting in and out. So I'm so sorry I joined you so very late. Oh, but that's anyway, right. I find it very interesting. Um, that's a, that's all. Have been here. That's all right. That's all right. And that's what it's about. It's about trying to stimulate a conversation more than anything else. Um, and um, yeah, no, really, what I was saying there <clears throat> is 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 making sure that it's it's relevant and and particularly around buying followers but I think sometimes people think oh well I want this instant fix I want to grow my account so quickly like um but it takes forever and it does it you know this is a this is a slow burn about being consistent um and um you know using using posts three times a week I mean sometimes people do more than that but at least maybe five times it depends on really what you're doing um so yeah i mean george do you want to just share some perspective around instagram and what your what your thoughts are oh that's uh that's given me a lot here uh <laughs> yeah so as i said to lydia my focus is on, sort of on the research aspect so when it comes to instagram hacks and um everything in the layman's terms that's gordon's job um but i could just maybe give some 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 things I've come across with with what the research is is kind of finding um uh do you want me to just go with that or did you want me to comment on something give me maybe something more specific to talk about because I can go for days on on the research side of things <laughs> well yeah I mean it'll be just interesting to see why you were saying at the beginning why people follow people isn't it what, what is it that yeah. resonates with them why do we why do we press this follow button or we want to find out more i mean i'm i'm always fascinated i say to people when they are um when what actions you take like a share a follow a like a comment why i think it's about being self-aware if you are self-aware about what you do then you and then almost mentally record that and say yeah why did i like that video why did i like that post well because that will because mm -hmm. almost can then go into your funnel and your strategy that actually helps decide what you're going to do rather than just saying, oh, well, I've got this product. I'm just going to push it out on Instagram. I'm like cringe at those words. 
mm -hmm. because because there's no real um it's almost like chucking paint at the wall and hoping some of it will stick you know and that's not what's going to get real growth is it it's about finding the right type of content that really resonates with your audience and 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 also to extend that um influence isn't necessarily number of followers correct so also identifying what what type of relationship you really want is it is it is this a, a business um thing you're going after on what are your objectives on instagram and then that should guide um you know what type of relationships you think you need to form with the followers um and then that should guide maybe your content selection mm. um so what you said about being consistent and things take a long time, there is some research to support that that might not be a, a bad thing that it takes some time. And, and the reason is, is um, uh, followings that are built up over um, a longer period of time um, tend to mean that your followers are more, <clears throat> have a trusted relationship with you. Right. Um, so when it comes to influencer marketing, if you, if you then go to endorse a product, I mean, the engagement rates then tend to be a lot higher, which brands like. Absolutely right. Yeah, yeah. No, no, that's really sound as well. I mean, um, Anna, tell us where you are on the spectrum, because I don't uh, I know that Lydia didn't meet you at the beginning. So tell us where you are at the moment with your brand. Um, OK, so the, the we have terrifically loyal um users so we're selling a sleep device so it's expensive it takes a lot for people to buy one um they're enormously generous and interact with us and give us absolutely fabulous reviews um what we lack is uh awareness nobody knows about us yes so uh that's that's the issue that we have to crack and some of the the, I suppose the biggest problem that we have is that um, we don't have enough time and it's linked with lack of income. We're surviving, but we're not doing much more. Mm, mm. So our steps forward are uh, small. And when we, we do move, move forward, but um, uh, we haven't yet got to the point where we can make our lives easier. Uh, and, oh, sorry. I beg no, your pardon. Carry on, Anna. Sorry. So, so my, I've, been, I've been a little bit awkward with... Um, many forms of social media, um, including Instagram. And I think I'm, I'm, I'm kind of beginning to get it actually, <laughs> the mm. value that it's got, or the value that Instagram has got. Um, and also kind of to trust myself more. I mean, it's a bit daft really, because what people like about us is that they can trust us, that we know what we're talking about, you know, that I'm, we're straight and honest and all that kind of stuff. And um, I've been reluctant to put myself out there because basically of my own judgments, you know, that I'm too old, I'm, you know, too, too overweight, all that kind of stuff. And, um, and also, really, um, I suppose I've been, I am authentic, but nevertheless, I, I mean, I think I'm an authentic, I'm an authentic person, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm perfectly, I'm very capable of, mm. um, uh, you know, kind of sharing my vulnerabilities and all the rest of it. Um, so I, in a way I'm quite courageous, but that doesn't mean that I've necessarily put it out there. And, I, uh, and I, I'm kind of, I think I'm, I'm feeling my way perhaps slowly and awkwardly towards getting there. You're typical of our, uh, you know, a slightly older generation. And I don't get me wrong, I feel the same. I feel for what it's worth. I feel, I mean, you can imagine what it's like with surrounding myself with lots of young people that are absolutely killing it on video. And, uh, but what they do do is, I think we've come from a sort of a scripted, this is, you know, you're, you've got to get this right in one take. And you haven't. And people no. love the vulnerability. They love the authenticity. They love the realness of having a product that's been designed, innovated, um, it's got innovation uh, or, you know, attributed to it. Um, it's different. It's exciting. Um, so I think, you know what, you just got to get out there and do it and have a go yeah. with it. And at the end of the day, if it bombs to start with, 
then you know what you can delete it you will get better like anything you will get better at it but um but what what's important as well is is trying to remember inspire educate or entertain those are the three things that content should do inspire educate entertain um, so, uh, and the other, of course, thing, which I think would make a massive difference to you is getting user generated content. So in other words, it's, yeah. en it's encouraging your customers to post some pictures of them with the product That is rocket fuel. And if you yeah. can encourage that to happen and that in itself, because they're not just posting it, but of course they're posting it to their audience and their friends as well. Yeah. So, and that's how the fashion brands have really done it. I mean, their growth has all been through user-generated. I mean, look at um, Boohoo, uh, Gymshark, massive. I mean, been, Gymshark is valued at over a billion pounds now. You know, that hasn't come from just them promoting their own range. It's come from user-generated content. Sure. Yeah. So I think yeah. that is definitely something to look at. And uh, maybe... You remember I said behind the scenes, maybe there's something about um, what's it like to have sleep problems, you know, so you're effectively uh, helping the, the user or the potential customer understand some of the issues and challenges. I think you can also do some nice little quotes around sleep. Um, some some famous people have had sleep problems. <laughs> You know, there's there's all sorts of things, but we've got plenty of nice little quotes from our own users. As well, well. well, well, that's great. So, what I think could be really good is to have those on a um, on a nice aesthetic. Get yourself a really nice preset, and have a look at the the examples that I've sort of uh, sent there. And you can just go, you can just actually go and look at Instagram presets, Google it, um, and you can look at um, the different types of things that are there um and um i think that's gonna make a massive difference to you anna and really yeah. have really yeah. have a look yeah. at those hashtags look at those yeah. hashtags that, that are really relevant and maybe put them into an excel spreadsheet or a word document and then just periodically use bunches of them from time to time but really really look at what people are searching for when it comes to sleep sleep deprivation um, yes. That's, yes, that's what you need to be at all over um, and just follow the format, stick to it, and things will happen. Guarantee it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I think you're right. I think you're right. Yeah. Great. All right. L L Lydia, then, was, was some of that helpful for you listening to me and um, what we were talking about? Everything is very helpful. Thank you. I truly have learned a lot. Oh, that's great. So tell me what, what's your plan as a um, somebody that runs uh, fashion events as well. And, and particularly, there's lots of fashion influencers uh, that I've got huge audiences. And I'm guessing that being able to tap into some of those is going to be very, very important for you. Because if you're wanting to get people to come to your events, having fashion influencers uh, to come is 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 not will not only help encourage other people but you're tapping it you're effectively borrowing other people's audiences um as well does that make sense yes of course that's ideally what i want i want people to come to the fashion week especially fashion designers of course so of course. so yeah. i'm sure that uh, with this you know, with what you've said today, if I go on and get to start working on a few things, I can get people coming. Yeah, no, it's, a, it's absolutely right. And, and what's important is using stories, Instagram stories. Uh, yes, and, I do and, that. And, and, and reels as well, or, or, you know, but, but, but doing it I all of the time and making sure that you're tagging uh, is another thing to do is to tag people of influence right not, not 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 lots but maybe three or four people and have a list of them and just because if you think about it what you're doing by tagging them is you're bringing them you're bringing them to the attention of them in their feed 
Mm -hmm. um, and, and so I'm just thinking of relevant fashion influencers that may be based in Scotland, um, maybe the types of people that you want to connect with. Um, and, and that way, just say you did five of them and two of them liked, commented or shared, suddenly your reach will, will, will have been transformed all through those those individuals. Sometimes they won't do it. Right. Sometimes they won't do it. So you shouldn't be disheartened. And that applies to you, Anna, as well. Um, sometimes when you think, oh, dear, this isn't working, if you are, if you employ the right strategy and are consistent and keep going with it, it will, the needle will start to move. And yeah. the, reason, the reason I say that is if you see something on TV for the first time, you don't rush out and buy it, do you? No. Because, because it's part of the brand impression day one. <laughs> And so influencer marketing and gaining follower bases uh, on Instagram is the same. Um, what's important, though, is that you are talking about Instagram everywhere. So I, I mention Instagram on my, on my podcast. It's on my website. It's on my email footer. Um, I try and mention it as many places as I possibly can. In fact, what we should do, actually, we should put our Instagram accounts in the chat at least we can increase our follower base today <laughs> so uh, we should definitely do that um i'm just gonna i'm just gonna move over while we're talking uh to that yeah so lydia what what, what else is the plan so uh, as i said i'm quite new to instagram i post twice weekly because that's when you know whatever I have going on YouTube, I get to, to post as advertising and uh, I don't have a big following on the, you know, the profession, uh, fashion art media, but That's I do have quite a few because I have uh, one personal Instagram uh, account and I also have for my fashion design. Okay. What is your, but, what, what is your Instagram account? So I have Lydia Cutler, that's my personal Cutler with K rather than C. And uh, I have also uh, Fashion Art Media. Fashion Art Media? Yes. I've, uh, I've so, got that, yeah. Okay. All right, I'm doing that now. So let's just, let's just push it up. Um, we can see. Right, that's your channel. That's my channel. Okay. Right, so these are designers, are they? Uh, I do interviews on YouTube with the creatives from art, from fashion and from media. Right, okay. Um, so you're not getting huge amounts of engagement, are you? No. Mm -hmm. No, um, and I think um, I think it can do with mm -hmm. uh, a you know a bit of a refresh on. Right. Uh, I, I also think this um, this looks quite heavy. Right. Um, that it's that it's uh, what what might be an idea, um, Lydia, is to uh -huh. try and refresh it so that there's something. That's, that's different on every other post. So you've got one, one, one post is about something inspirational. Another post is about an event. Another post right. is about a designer. So it looks like it's mixing it up a little bit. You know what I mean? Right. What you were just seeing that is quite heavy is the judges for the awards coming in a month's time. Oh, I see. So okay. Those right. are their posters and, you know, a bit of intro about who they are. Yeah. But normally, if you scroll down, you will see what I normally do. And then maybe tell me the blue and pink is what I normally use as a cover for uh, either reels or I've only just recently started doing reels. Right. Just a cover and to, you know, to say who I'm going to interview next. Yeah. 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 
which which I don't it's not I don't think it's a problem um have and the fact that you're bringing TikTok in I think is is good as well right um so 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 that is there but what what we've got to try and do is let me just just have a look at um so right so you've literally done there but you've got no hashtags there at all have you uh or, just or, one just for just, the for the, for the judge for the judge right okay yes. um did you um did you tag him or is it just a hashtag just hashtag right okay so sorry not hashtag just uh, is it no i tagged him you did tag not him. hashtag i didn't hashtag sorry right no no so so this is this is the this is the, this is the problem i'm not having hashtags mm -hmm. you know the only people that are going to know about you are your follower base and only a very small percentage of them right. so when you, when you post something um 228 people are not going to see it right less than 22 people are going to see it right so there's you thinking maybe that right here's my post and i've got my followers are going to see that no they're not the only people okay. are going to see that are the people that have already been liking and connecting with you in the first place right. if, if that small group like and comment the algorithm will push it out further. And if that second tier of people like and comment, it will push it out further and so mm -hmm. on and so on. That's the way the algorithm works because otherwise mm -hmm. we would have, we would have, you know, content from carpets to ceiling and we can't read everything. So the way the social media networks work is, is that they want to give you, as a viewer, relevant content that you like, comment, and share. Yeah? So they're going mm -hmm. to give you more of it. But if you're not doing that with people, then you're not going to see much. Um, right. Something else you might like to consider is in your feed, the mm -hmm. stuff that's coming through to you, you might mm -hmm. decide, well, I'd, I'm fed up with looking at this particular person's stuff. So you can mute mm -hmm. them. You can mute them. So that basically means that you are starting to see content that is highly relevant for what you want. Right. Okay. Um, so I think um, there's more things that you can do with your bio here as well. Mm -hmm. So um, you can use more words because at the moment you just put your YouTube channel, which is fine but you might like to uh, use some little emojis um, right. at the top there and also say where you've put video creator i think you should put like fashion or fashion so use a hashtag fashion you not even put video creator is a uh -huh. um, as a hashtag so that right. means that i won't even be found so the fact you're a video creator nobody knows that Right. So you should start with a bio that says hashtag video creator, hashtag fashion organizer, hashtag right. whatever. Because then people that are typing in uh -huh. video creator or fashion designer, suddenly you're going, you could well be on the explore page. And the explore wow. page is like the ocean of okay. content. Yeah. If you can imagine. Yeah. You're in the little tributary, little tiny river. How do you get into the ocean? Well, you get into the ocean by using the, the relevant hashtags. That's the same with you, Anna. Um, in your bio, I would be having words like hashtag sleep, hashtag, yeah. hashtag, yeah. sleep, sleep expert even. Um, yeah. Hashtag so basically, it, it's really important to, to get what a hashtag does. <laughs> Absolutely right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like it's like a toolkit. It's it's like a toolkit for people to find you. Yeah. yeah? Because yeah. if I if I didn't have rum, if I was promoting this new rum brand and I didn't put hashtag rum in there, then it would be pointless because, you know, I want people that don't know about 8-Track, I want them to find find us. And the only way we're going to find us is trying to find ladders. And if you can imagine the ladders are the hashtags, 
that allow people to find find what you are looking for. Yeah. And, and look, yeah. this isn't an exact science. This will change as time, you know, you'll you'll start to optimize it. You'll start to keep an eye on your competitors, what they are doing. Yeah. And um, so before just launching and saying I'm going to change everything, it's a two-pronged attack. It's changing what you're doing but it's also looking at what the competition is doing. And um, I also like, I've noticed on my personal profile that pictures of me, nice pictures of me resonate a lot better than just, you know, physical things that are slightly less relevant. So if, for example, I was putting some stats, some interesting stats on one of my posts, which I thought was really good actually, <laughs> The reality is nobody else did. <laughs> now it could have been the fact that I didn't, I didn't promote it in a big. Should I have like done one post with a big statistic? Did you know forty eight percent of people? You know, rather than actually just showing the graph. So sometimes it's not about the information that we're trying to get over, but it's actually about the um, the way in which we're presenting it. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, cool. Mm, okay. Um, questions? Do you want me to have a look at yours, Anna, for the last few yeah, minutes? Yeah, go and ha have a look at it. Um, so I think it's just under at, um, I hope it's under at ZC. It could be at Z's Pebble. I'm sorry, I'm really impaired. <laughs> I've got such, such a lot of pain. Oh, so, bless you. Remind um, me how to spell it again. Z double -E Z, so it's either at Z's sleep or at Z's pebble. Z double -E Z sleep. I hope. There we. Uh, are we there? Uh, sleep where? No. Is it? Oh, Z double -E Z. Sorry, you're missing a Z. Z double -E Z. Z. And then sleep. There we go. That's us. Right. Can you, you still see that, everybody, yeah? Yeah. Right, I, I okay. Oh, I've seen this before, haven't I? Yeah. You've seen this before, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You've seen that we've had basically three different iterations um, of, you know, kind of good photography, uh, kind of images, and then me doing a total mishmash. <laughs> yeah. Actually, the, the um, latest one I just put up last night, the, the hand at the top, yeah, that, that's kind of what I've decided to do from now on. So, well, I don't know whether I, I'll probably change the decision, you know, might change the decision. I, I, well, I've already made some decisions as a result of today. Right. This but, one, this one here in the middle, that's got the highest yeah. number of, of um, likes. So right. what you're doing there is you're telling people exactly, uh, you're telling them exactly what the product is about sleep tech to help you sleep less right in your right. face whereas the others yeah. i haven't got a clue what they are okay and okay. so that's an okay. important that's an important point to mention so you know what i can okay. see i'm hovering over here and i can see 11 likes 13 likes eight likes 32 likes there 36 likes there so oh this one 115 what was going on here now you know why because video yeah but vo yeah. is where it's at absolutely yeah. so you've you've actually done better it's like you've got worse you, well done... those are a long time ago as well oh, okay probably, oh, yes. oh i see uh, i think Fine. you probably have got worse um but and then i you know if you if you were to scroll down earlier you'd find more likes uh with a different uh, yeah so that one's got 71 yeah I wanted um, to show you in terms of aesthetics what, yeah. um, and I have shown her before because she's one of my, she's one of my favourites. <laughs> so this is oh, Louise. Yeah, this Lady Louise. Louise yeah. Simpson. Uh, Just I mean, wonderful, yeah. Look look at that aesthetic. That's a classic preset filter. She's of, and what's the result? She's getting loads and loads of people. Yeah, yeah. and she's got her. a consistency, which is lovely. It really, really is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right, guys, I've got to go, actually, because I've got a 10 o'clock call. I hope that was of use for you and beneficial. And um, 
if you want to find out more again uh, next Wednesday, uh, do come along. Um, be really grateful if you could say something in the Facebook group, because I, I do want to encourage more people to join us. Um, and uh, anything you can say today would be really helpful. Can I just you, ask Gordon. one question, please, before you go? Sure. Do you also um, have uh, Facebook, uh, sorry, Facebook, YouTube uh, courses like this one or meetings like this one? Um, not on YouTube, no. We are developing my own YouTube channel as we speak, actually. Um, and I want to do more of that, more YouTube channels. I, I, I mean, I do have a YouTube channel, but it's very small. I won't lie. I've focused my main channels on LinkedIn. Um, and um, yeah, so it, it's it's in progress. <laughs> right. Okay. Thank you. Very, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I, I'll, I'll definitely put a copy on Facebook, but it it certainly won't be today. All right, but, that's all right. Um, I'll do it. Lovely. All right. Bless you. <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank you as okay. well. Okay. Bye bye then. Cheers thank then. you. Nice bye -bye. to meet you, guys. Thanks, thank Jordan. Jordan. Everyone. No problem. Bye bye. bye.